Quentin, the concept of fine tuning has become extremely hot among physicists, among theologians, philosophers, everybody's dealing with this. And the argument among physicists is whether you need multiple universes to explain fine tuning or can you find some ultimate theory of everything. Of course, no theology in there whatsoever. Among theists, they look upon this as, if not proof, strong inference that God did it. How do you look on it? Well, I think the real problem is, is, uh, is the answer is neither of those two. And the many worlds hypothesis, uh, if it's true or not, is irrelevant because there's a contradiction in the very idea of the theistic fine-tuning argument. Because what they do is they accept scientific evidence of the fine-tuning and yet they reject the method of science and the rest of science in positing God as explaining this fine-tuning. So, well, so what they do is they reject the parts of science that say a disembodied mind is impossible, some neurophysiology and psychology, and they reject the scientific theory that each state of the universe is caused by an earlier state, and they're introducing God as interrupting the natural causal process. And it need not be probabilistic, because they might say, oh, quantum mechanics means it's probabilistic. But the versions of this quantum mechanics apply to the universe as a whole. They're called the Bohmian, and one you would it's not well heard of, the consistent histories, it would be James Hartles and Murray Gelman's, they imply that causal determinism as a probability of one that something will happen if there's a cause. And so there's no room for God to cause any of the fine-tuning elements, or there's no room for God to even begin in the universe, because the beginning of the universe itself is caused by uh, earlier states, once you start dividing it down into, into states that are the length of a fraction or states that are uh, instantaneous, correspond to points on the, on the real line. All right, l l let me give you your due. Let me say that your arguments do away with theism for the time being. You still have a fine-tuning problem. You still have a cosmological constant regulating the expansion of the universe that is tuned to one in, depends who you listen to, 53 decimal points or 100 and some odd decimal points. I mean, an, an incredible number. And then you have a whole series of other fine-tunings which seem to be required to have galaxies and stars and planets and ultimately life and people. You still have to explain that. How do you explain all of these independent ratios and atomic weights all coming together to produce what we have here? Well, what the fine-tuning constants of the elementary forces and particles, they are sufficient to enable uh, yellow dwarf stars like our sun to exist. But the real point is they don't include any probability that life is going to exist. There's no probability, no characteristic of stars or elementary molecules that DNA is going to, is possible. But that's exactly the point. You cannot find uh, a probabilities of DNA and life in what seems to make stars as they are. Mm -hmm. They're not there. But we have the, the result, and we have only one data point, which is this universe, as far as we know. So from one data point, if it's not obviously embedded in, in, in the laws of physics of stars, which is what you're saying, I think, and, and we have it here, you got to explain it. Oh, you can. You can say that there are capacities that when atoms and molecules form large enough aggregates and a certain type of aggregates, then they will form DNA molecules, but, and only under certain circumstances. And so, the, so the laws, they're biological laws. And so they are actualized long after the purely physical laws of the early universe are in operation. I mean, they began uh, you know, possibly uh, 10 billion years after the Big Bang. And but so now, in, right now, it's 15 billion years after. But in your worldview, were those laws of biology, if you will, 
Were those built into those laws of physics? Were they there? They had to be had to be capacities of the elementary particles that, if combined in a certain way, they would give rise to the biological laws. And are you saying that it had to be that way? That was the only way it could be, because many people say that the ways that it could be are a gigantic number, and the ways that it could be that result in the way we are is a very small number. Uh, the world is contingent, meaning it's possible things might have been otherwise. And so things might have been arranged so that uh, creatures a hundred times smarter, morally better than us existed. And uh, if God was going to create beings, uh, I don't think he would have created humans. I, I certainly wouldn't have created humans. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, th th that's... Maybe it's your strongest argument. But, but putting aside God, I, I, don't want, I want to put God out of the picture. I just want to deal with this physical world and the, the likelihood or not likelihood of the, of the laws of physics in all of its uh, uh, law and all of the constants and the specific values of the constants, the ratio of the proton to the electron, the electromagnetic force to gravitational force, the cosmological constant and the expansion, you know, all these different in seemingly independent forces have values that have to be within an extremely tight range to enable the things that the stuff of the world to exist. I mean, uh, people say this, uh -huh. and you have to be able to explain it. And, and one explanation is this is the only way it could be because there's some underlying theory of everything or grand unification theory that'll force it. Is that what you believe? 